In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly set up to produce a really good chroma key slash green screen effect. So that way you can get the best results that you can get in whatever editing program you use. There's four major components to setting up for a good chroma key effect. The first of which is the background itself that you're going to be keying out. The second of which is where you stand in relation to the background. The third is the lighting sources. And finally, the fourth is the camera that you're using. I'm going to show you how to properly set up all four so you can get the best possible results every single time you attempt the chroma key on the background. So stay tuned. When doing a chroma key effect, where you stand in relation to the background plays a major role in how good the effect will come out. If you stand too close to the background, like right now I'm touching it, the lighting is going to bounce off the background and is going to land on me. This is going to cause the edges of my arms, my legs, everything to be blurry because literally there's a slight green haze on me right now just from the lighting hitting the backdrop and landing on me. Now something else worth mentioning about standing too close to the green screen is that the closer you are, the more likely you're going to have shadows on the green screen. And you can see it from me standing too close. I'm casting a couple of big shadows on the green screen. And this is going to make it far more difficult to pull off a good effect because you need smooth lighting on the green screen. You, you don't want any shadows. And this is something we'll talk about more later. But just keep in mind that the closer you stand, the more likely you are to have shadows on the green screen. In order to get a better effect, you want to stand as far away from the backdrop as you possibly can in order to separate yourself from the background. This will produce the sharpest edges and will make it easier to pull off the effect than anything else. This is a dull material. It's not very reflective. Now, my wall, on the other hand, this is also green. It's pretty much the same color. It may look a bit different because of the lighting. But this is a reflective material. Even though my wall is, is a good color for doing a chroma key effect, because it's, it's glossy, this is going to bounce more lighting off it. And it's going to produce that haze effect that we were just talking about where the lighting lands on you and you start the chroma key out with the backdrop. So you want to buy a, a setup that's for green screen specifically. It'll be a a non-glossy color that won't reflect as much light. So get something that's specifically for chroma key uh, for a background. Now, as for the lighting, you're going to notice I have a couple of funky looking lights here. They're called umbrella lights. Umbrella lights, it uses a translucent umbrella in order to diffuse the light. It causes the light to spread around the room more evenly. It's called soft lighting. This is in contrast to hard lighting, which we'll talk about in a minute. Soft lighting produces fewer shadows and it hides detail. So if you have wrinkles, for instance, the wrinkles won't show up as much with soft lighting because it, it, it produces uh, diffuse light, which doesn't produce shadows. You need soft lighting in order to do a green screen effect because you want no shadows at all. That background has to be as evenly lit as possible. So you're going to want to get something like these called umbrella lights or something else called a soft box light that will diffuse the light and make it soft. So I just shut off my umbrella lights and right now I'm using a torch light. This is not soft light. This is not something you would want to use. If I shine it at my tripod, look at that distinctive shadow. The shadow is so pronounced, I can't even tell where the tripod ends and where the shadow begins. This is going to highlight every single imperfection in the backdrop. Every little wrinkle is going to have its own shadow that's going to make it more difficult to produce the effect. So you don't want to use a directional or hard lighting source like this. You want to use the umbrella lights that I showed you. Now, speaking of lighting, if you have windows, these are going to affect the lighting. 
And if it's a sunny day, the sun will produce very, very, very hard lighting, which you don't want, as we just discussed. So you're best off to close the blinds on the windows to minimize the amount of outside lighting coming in as you can. You want to rely on your soft lighting source, such as your umbrella lights, to produce all the lighting for the green screen effect. If you're fortunate enough to have a DSLR camera with a lens that allows you to make adjustments to the aperture, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open the lens up as much as you can. That means you want a lower f-stop number. If your camera will go down to f2.8, for instance, then set it to f2.8. Because what that's going to do is it's going to make the depth of field shallower. So you'll be in focus, but the background will be slightly blurry. You want the background to be slightly blurry because if the background is blurry, all those imperfections such as the wrinkles are not going to show up as much. So using a low f-stop number, opening the lens up, will produce better results because that background is going to be just a little bit blurry and you're not going to see the imperfections on it quite as much. Okay, so right now I have a little experiment going on. I have a camera where the f-stop is capable of being changed right here. And I have a little bug zapper set up on a table. See, right now I have the f-stop, which you can see is right here. This is set to f32, which is the highest it'll go. And when you look at the screen, you're going to see there's a lot of wrinkles and such in the screen. I'll show you the footage from the actual camera. But if I change the f-stop and I set it to the lowest it'll go, which is f3.1 on this lens, now I'm going to have to reduce the brightness because the f-stop will... Um, it, it increases the brightness when you lower the f-stop. It's opening the lens up. But look at the difference. Um, you can probably even see it in the screen. There's no wrinkles on the backdrop anymore. There, I mean, this backdrop has a lot of wrinkles, as you can see. But when you lower the f-stop to as low as it'll go, they're all completely gone. So that's a huge advantage to having a DSLR camera or any other camera that will let you manually adjust the f-stop. It probably doesn't need to be said, but I'll say it anyway. When setting up for a green screen effect, you need to be careful of what you wear. You need to wear colors that contrast highly with the color you're trying to key out. If you're trying to key out a green color, don't wear green or anything remotely similar to green because you're going to have issues where your clothes are going to get keyed out with the backdrop. You want to, if you have a green backdrop, for instance, wear something like black, something that contrasts highly with it. Even this is not the greatest thing to wear because there's so many colors on here. One of them could have an issue and could key out with the background. So wear something simple, something like black. Just try to wear a one color if you can, just to make it easier and don't use the same color backdrop as the clothes that you're wearing. It will not work at all. Okay, everybody, so that's how you set up for a proper green screen slash chroma key effect. I will have links in the description of the video for lighting sources that you can use or backdrops that will produce a good effect. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned a lot. And please subscribe and wait for more. Just wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to my Zazzle store here. This is Enchanted Forest. This is my Zazzle store. I mostly focus on making wall art such as canvas prints, metal prints, foam boards, posters. And I have a wide variety of art that you can hang on your, your living room door or your bathroom, your bedroom, wherever you want to hang it. Let's check out this dark and mysterious type of art. This is going to include wall, wall art, metal wall art foam board such of ravens or spiders and such like that you have stormy uh, oceans you have one of my favorite things is ravens with roses you can see right here and in fact if you click on this not only can you just buy the print like you see here but you can actually change a lot about it see right now this size is huge it's 40 by 50 inches 
But if I click more, I have all these other sizes I can choose from. I can choose a five by seven if I wanted to and uh, just buy a really small version of this for a lot less money. Now it's only seven bucks. You can also edit the design. You could add your own text to it if you wanted to. Hello. I spelled hello wrong, but right here you can change the color. Now the text is white. You can zoom in and out. Click the plus button. You can zoom in and out. There's actually a lot you can do. You can even upload your own images and add to my design if you wanted to buy it. But I have all these other categories. I have my ocean inspired wall art. You know I love the ocean. And you can see that a lot of these are colorful. This one in particular is my favorite. I, um, this is gonna just be on the walls at, at my house at some point. And it can be on your wall as well. I have trippy wall art too. If you want some colorful, majestic type of stuff, some weird looking stuff, I have that. And I also have my beauties that uh, I like to call them. Hang in something like this on your wall. She has with the flower petals on her head. You have kind of fantasy art here, walking by a brightly lit moon. So anyway, I just wanted to give that shout out to my Zazzle channel here. It's um, Enchanted Forest is the name of my Zazzle store. You can see right up here. I'll have the link in the description. Please check it out.